Welcome to Mikey's Gaming Oasis. Today we're delving deeper into the world of Dawn of Defiance with a complete guide for the shrines and the Forgotten Crossroads. In this video, we will go over the locations and the missions as well as how to complete the missions in the most efficient way for all eight shrines. This will help you in your quest to dethrone Hades. For ease of use, we've separated this in two chapters. So if you've already completed some of these missions and you just need a refresher or you get stuck, please feel free to jump around to find what you are looking for. At the end of this episode, we will also go over the crafting stations that will be needed to craft the items that you will receive while going through each one of these shrines. As some of you are aware, we are a very small channel just starting out, and according to the YouTube algorithm, 80% of y'all are not subscribed. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Without further ado, let's get into it. As you may know, as you go through the portal, you're going to end up at the Forgotten Crossroads, where you will encounter Aeacus. Aeacus will give you a mission defile the eight shrines speckled throughout the Forgotten Crossroads. Once you accept this, you will be able to start tracking which shrines you have defiled. The first shrine we are going to look at today is the Shrine of Apollo, which is just south of the crossroads or portal area that you just came from. Once you get there, you want to get as close as possible to it. You don't necessarily have to kill the guards there. You just want to activate the mission. And it'll tell you in your quest log that you need to find 15 Brazers of Apollo. Three of these Brazers are on the initial starting island that we just left, 12 of which are located throughout the crossroads. To activate each Brazer of Apollo, you will need 20 Ambrosia Dust. So ensure that you have Ambrosia Dust on you. As you know, there's two ways to get them. The best way is from the crystals and in the grinder. Once you activate the last Brazer, it'll give you this sign here. Then you can go back to the Temple of Apollo, access it, and well, kill all the guards first, of course. Access it, and you will see a chest on the right. On the right is going to give you two items, one of which is gold, the other is the Voyager Centurion Helm recipe. Once you defile the altar, you will also receive another recipe. In this case, it is the Music Box recipe. The Shrine of Hera is located in the southeastern portion of the map, as you see here. As with all shrines, you don't necessarily have to kill all the guards. You just have to get close enough to activate the mission, in this case, 10 pomegranates. The pomegranates are located on the eastern side of the island, pretty much right across from your starting point. While the mission says to only get 10 to contribute, I highly recommend taking down the entire grove. You'll get around 100 pomegranates. The reason for this is the pomegranates are needed for other recipes throughout the game. The pomegranate trees also give you hardwood. Not hard risen, just hard wood. Once you've collected your pomegranates, you go back to the temple and you take out the guards again. And then when you enter the shrine, you will see again a chest and the shrine. In this case, you will get another two recipes out of here. You will get the Voyager Centurion uh, cloak and chest piece along with the Vengeance Elixir recipe. The Shrine of Zeus is located just southwest of the portal area that we started at. It is nestled within the cliffside underneath the statue of Zeus itself. Keep in mind, in this area, there are a lot of mobs that are going to come after you. Zeus wants you to take out 20 purple wisps that you have to go to a high place to get. They are located here on the map, just north of your starting portal. Keep in mind, there are also enemies up here you have to keep in mind out for. Now, when you're up here, you're going to look for these purple orbs, grab your bow and arrow, and you're going to shoot them down. I recommend getting as close as possible to them to make sure that you shoot them down accurately. Now, when you shoot these orbs, they're going to drop little bags of ambrosia dust. It is up to you whether you want to pick them up, 
there that is a quick and easy way to get a very small amount of ambrosia dust each once you have completed gathering <clears throat> or rather killing these wisps you can then return to the temple of zeus kill the gorgon and the uh soldiers that are there guarding the temple which will allow you to gain access once you've killed the Gorgon and the guards, you can enter the shrine just like all the others. Again, you're going to find a chest on the right and a shrine in the middle. In Zeus's temple, you will get the recipe for the Hoplite bow, another 50 gold. And once you defile the altar, you will also get the Thunderbolt arrow recipe. So you will have Zeus's Thunderbolt. The next shrine that we are going to be looking at the shrine of hermes is located pretty much due no east of our starting location of the portal on this island once you get there you will activate the mission in which will tell you to find 10 hermes throughout the island there are these little busts each bust will give you a guess or a hint on where to find the next one the map shows the locations of all 10 shrines or busts of hermes if you notice, they are all pretty close to where your shrines are or your brazers of Apollo are. I recommend making sure that you do both missions at the same time to kill two birds with one stone. As with all the shrines, once you complete your mission and find the ten statues or busts of Hermes, you can then kill the guards and enter the shrine to defile it. You will receive the Hoplite Shield recipe and 50 gold for completing this mission. Unfortunately, with this one, you do not get a recipe for defiling the altar. The Shrine of Dionysus is located northeast of your starting portal point. Much like the Shrine of Zeus, it is nestled within a cliffside. Once you activate the mission for this shrine, you will be asked to maintain the effects of the Ambrosia Elixir for a full night and day cycle. You cannot skip time and you cannot die during this. To create the elixir, you will need reeds, rabbit, uh, pituitary gland, ambrosia dust, and raw wolf hearts, which means you're going to need to go to some waterways to get reeds. You're going to need three-star rabbits and three-star wolf skills to be able to get the pituitary gland and the raw wolf hearts. You will need approximately five to six of these elixirs. They last for 10 minutes each, and they give you a boost in stam and stam recovery. I highly recommend doing missions that you know you will not perish on while keeping an eye on that timer. Once you've completed that mission, you return to the shrine as always. Once you enter the shrine and defile it, you will see that it is set up very similar to Zeus's. Uh, in this particular shrine, you will receive the recipe for the Voyager Centurion Bracers, which go on your arms, another 50 gold, and you will receive the Resurrection Elixir Recipe. The Shrine of Athena is located on a hill in the northern portion of the Dark Forest. Keep in mind, the Dark Forest is pretty much perpetual night, so you will run into the Abandoned, the Lost, a lot of Gorgons, and you have a couple of champions in there as well. Once you activate the Shrine, you will be given the mission to contribute nine medallions. Now, the Athena medallions are located within these camps where you will find three wayward soldiers that are all near the shrine of Athena. As you kill these soldiers, for each camp you will get three Athena me uh, medallions. These camps are fairly easy to find. Once you find the first one, follow the little question mark on your guide on the top and it'll help lead you to the next one. I highly recommend taking on the mission to kill soldiers from Aeacus at the same time to again kill two birds with one stone. To help you out, here are the locations of all three of the maps in the northern area of the crossroads. Once you have completed this, you then go back to the shrine, contribute the medallions to the shrine of Athena, open it, and defile the shrine. Once you open the treasure chest in this particular shrine, you will get the Voyager Centurion uh, Cateris, the that's the chest piece without the cape, as well as the Aegis, uh, Aeg Aegis Elixir Recipe. Our next shrine that we're going to look at is the Shrine of Poseidon. This one is one of the easiest ones to get. Once you get to it, it's going to ask you to contribute 20 seashells. 
Now, the 20 she cells can be found in the island directly east of the temple location. There's two ways to get to it. You can either build a bridge as far as you can across, or attempt what I did and fly almost all the way there, which almost killed me due to the fact that I did not have enough stam. The sh you're going to run around the beach here, and you're going to pick up the seashells. Now, keep in mind, the she cells are very, very small. As you see, it is right there on the tip of my spear. Very small. You're going to collect them. You can collect more if you want. You only need 20. Uh, unfortunately, they don't really go for much when you go to sell them. Once you have collected all your seashells and you return back to the uh, shrine, you contribute them as you did with Athena, enter the shrine, and you will defile it and collect your recipes from the uh, treasure chest and the shrine itself. And this one, you're going to get a recipe for the Hoplite Spear and what I think is one of the most OP weapons in the game so far, the Poseidon's Trident. The Shrine of Ares is located in the south of the ancient desert. Beware, in the ancient deserts, you have to deal with the sandstorms as well as the uh, golems and all the other mobs that you've seen in all the other temples. Now, here you're going to ask to be killed three golems. The golems are located here, right near your starting point. They're not hard to kill. I recommend a little tuck and roll and using your hoplite spear or your best spear that you have and attacking them from behind, keeping an eye out for when they throw those rocks. Because once you throw the once they throw those rocks or do that body slam, it'll take a huge chunk off of your health. Once you have defeated your your golems and collected their resources, you can then return to the shrine, kill the guards and the gorgon around it, and enter the shrine to defile it. Once you have entered the shrine and activate the treasure chest, you will receive the Voyager Centurion Graves, which go on your legs, 50 gold as always, and the Fury Elixir Recipe. Well, thank you for hanging out with us today. We truly hope that this uh, guide for the Shrines of the Crossroads was helpful to you in completing this mission. As promised, we are now going to go over the workstations and crafting stations needed to create the recipes that you have earned during this mission. The first thing you're gonna need is the alchemy station. This will allow you to make all the elixirs and potions that you have found during these missions as well as creating the ambrosia that you needed as well. Ignore the music box. Next you're gonna need is the bird feeder. The bird feeder, I know it sounds weird, but you're gonna add berries in there and collect dyed feathers for the plumage that you have uh, for your helmet, as you see here. Without those dyed feathers, you cannot make the helmet. The next thing you're gonna need is the smelters. The smelters handle the lower level metals and make them into ingots. Then you're gonna need the greater smelter, which handles the higher level ingots. And then you also need the charcoal kiln to make the charcoal to run the greater smelter. The next thing you will need is the armor station. Here is where you're going to make all your weapons, bows, and tools to include the overpowered Poseidon that you from the recipes that you've gotten. Now in here, you have the different levels that you can make. Depending on the materials you use is going to tell you the strength of that weapon or armor that you are making. Keep that in mind. Now some of these materials are maybe a little weird to you, such as uh, the steel as well as the which is an alloy as well as the uh hardwood or ancient wood rather and the amber for a complete guide on where to find all of the resources i highly recommend using the video link below in the description for jade pg he did an amazing video on where to find all the resources throughout the crossroads that I found very helpful, and I hope you will too. Thank you again, and if you liked this video and it was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.